No, we don't have to control it Put it all out in the open If it's only for a moment It's a lifetime of emotion Put it all out in the open Yeah, they're all they're all here because okay. that's what they do. Um, they have to be in the middle so of everything. Anyways, hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally doing the Q and A, where I will try to while I get harassed by my horses a little bit. Other what horse other than Milo do you feel the most connected to? Banksy. Oh, that was an easy one, wasn't it? Do you want to say why, perhaps? Because I have known him since his first breath, and he's sweet. Very nice. Um, how do you sit Milo's bucks or any bucks for that matter? Um, lots of practice and just a will to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any like sort of strategies from a like, I don't know, like a physical perspective I in terms of what you do? I find it easier to get a little out of the tack rather than sitting deep in the saddle, but I don't want to advise people to do that because I don't know if it'll work for them. But it works for my balance and center of gravity. Fair enough. Um, why does Milo hate chickens? Um, we don't know. He's always <laughs> hated birds since we moved here. My best guess, Pogo, <laughs> He's my just best guess is that it's because they eat, they tried eating his food. That's probably true. I'm having to move now because Pogo's totally right in my way. So here we go. Oh, and he's following me. Okay, hang on. I'm moving back. <laughs> Okay, hang on. It's just a stuff. Fi yeah, finding. Okay, there we go. Stay there, Pogo. That's like that's good. That's that's doing it for me. Okay, are we ready? I'm gonna try and come a little closer. Like how low down this chair is. They love. They love it. Okay. Um. Ready? Yeah. Oh, Jaden. She's the one that's like somewhere local in BC as well. Lovely. Um, how much experience do you feel that someone should have to have a thoroughbred off the track? And do you feel that age matters? I'm guessing she means age of rider, probably, yeah, exactly. or but maybe answer for both age of rider and age of horse. Okay. Well, okay. So I would say in most cases, age of the person would matter because the horses, even if the kids are really good rider, they can be quite strong. However, there are some young riders that are well above what is average for their age range that could handle one for sure, straight off the track. Um, and then other than that, like age doesn't mean you have experience. So I'd say if people who haven't restarted young horses before and aren't comfortable riding horses like that shouldn't, oh my God, stay here. <laughs> Just start. It's okay. <laughs> people that aren't comfortable riding green horses and haven't done a fair amount of training, they shouldn't get one unless they're planning on working super close with the trainer and having the horse in training. Maybe it's okay. And we're back. Okay. So. Next one, which we got interrupted on, was do you have any advice for riders like me who get nervous in a crowded arena? That's a good question. I would, when you're in a less crowded arena with someone that you know well and that you can you ride with, practice doing like steering drills around other horses when there's less horses in the arena. So you could practice passing each other and just correct arena etiquette, but when there's less people and then Try to work your way up to work riding in a more crowded arena as you get more comfortable and learn better strategies. <laughs> He's trying to climb in the chair. Okay. Do you th and do you think did she mean it from a, a, a like a showing perspective? Do you think or no? Probably, but you could do that. Schooling again. shows would be good for that because yeah. they tend to have smaller classes, right? Yeah. You say that again. Oh my God. What oh. should someone look for when buying off the track? That really depends on what you're looking for in a horse and what you're trying to do. Okay, wait, I'm going to wait for all these millions of cars to go by. Um, that really depends on what you're looking to use the horse for and to what level. Because someone who just wants to do lower level stuff could get a horse that has had more injuries than another horse for like upper level prospect. So it really depends on your discipline too, because like a barrel racer might want a smaller thoroughbred than a show jumper would. So I would think about everything that you would put if you were writing an in search of ad for your horse, and then just apply that to thoroughbreds. And you'll want to look for something with clean legs, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be injury free. It's injuries would just have to be something that doesn't prevent it from doing what you're going to be asking. Are there certain injuries that you 
um, particularly avoid and other ones that aren't as big an issue for you? Any, I avoid anything cosmetic because my horses will be sold again later. So if they've healed fine and they're sound to go in the direction I'm going to be asking of them, then it's fine. But if it looks ugly, even if it's not a big deal, people don't want to buy them. So. Um, have you found that having a YouTube and internet presence has changed any of your opportunities or the way people view you? I would say, I, I would say that it has given me more opportunities that I couldn't get without it because I wouldn't have the traction I do on social media because I can't afford to show all the time and get my name known in the same way. Are you going to pee? I, yeah, so I can't afford to show all the time and get my name known in the same way as someone who can. So I think it's helped out with that and maybe like it's put people off that don't respect my views on horses, but I wouldn't want to work with those people anyways. So it doesn't really matter to he me. He basically just wants to climb in the chair with you is what he's attempting yeah, he to do. Needs to pee, like. Well, then he can, he has like a freedom to go anywhere in the field at this point in time. Yeah. I, he just like, he honestly just wants to get right in the chair with you. I'm not exaggerating. Okay. Um, there's one more piece to that question about the internet one. Um, do you have any advice about managing a presence and keeping it beneficial for your image? That's a good question. Um, like I would think it depends on what you're using it for. If you're doing training, your views on how horses should be kept and handled are relevant. So personally for me, I wouldn't refrain from voicing those because I think ethics is a huge part of horse training that gets forgotten in the horse world by certain types of people. So it really depends on what you're trying to do and I would just say try to not say anything to anyone that you wouldn't be comfortable saying in person. If you're not comfortable holding to what you're saying online in person you shouldn't say it at all because then it's probably something that you're using the internet to hide behind to say. For all of my views on horses and stuff, if someone asked me about them, I would be honest with them in person. The difference is I wouldn't just shove them down someone's throat. So in person, people might not necessarily find out about them, but... Here comes Banksy right in the way. Oh okay, to... but, but if the topic arose in a conversation in person, I would say generally what I say online um, verbally because I stand by my thoughts and opinions. So I would say to just be careful that you're making sure you're not using the internet to say things that you wouldn't otherwise say. Um, what is one of your most memorable experiences from when you were a young rider that helped shape who you are as an equestrian today? Okay, I have one. <laughs> um, when I was really young and showing Arabs, my young horse that we had was really heavy in my hands during warm up the day before a show. and. At that time, like I wasn't able to do the work myself to put him together because I was only eight and I was really small. So after he came back from the warm-up arena, my trainer put him in his stall in his Kimberwick bit and tied the reins to his girth and left him like that for like an hour to the point where his muscles were like shaking. And that was how they handled him being heavy in my hands. So that changes what I do because I never want to be that person who takes out my frustrations on the horse by being unfair to them. Uh, what do you feed your horses when coming off the track? I make sure that I have really good hay. Like I like to have alfalfa, especially for the race horses, because they usually eat a fair amount of alfalfa or timothy on the track. So if I don't have alfalfa bales, I'll feed them lots of alfalfa cubes. And then I usually do a high fat grain. The grains here in Canada are way different than the US. So the one I use is called the Equicale and it's just at the Otter Co-ops that we have out this way. Um, so it would be different if you're American. And then I make sure they have 24 seven access to hay. When do you think you will retire Milo? And I love you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I don't really have a plan for that because if he did something that meant he would be uncomfortable working tomorrow, he would be retired tomorrow. Um, but like if he's happy and sound in his old age and wants to go for trail rides when he's like 25, all the power to him and I would do that. Like the horse will tell you when they're ready to slow down or stop. So his retirement will depend on that because if, yeah, if he really hurt himself, it wouldn't be a situation where I'd keep riding him when it wouldn't be fair to him. So he'd be retired whenever he needs. Why are you such a great equestrian YouTuber? And then, and then now here's the question, in all seriousness, 
How horses leaving and joining your herd affects or has affected their dynamic? How do you feel about halter bred horses? So um, leaving and adding horses to the herd, the horse that's new usually always gets like bullied away from the food to some extent. So you need to be more careful with putting more piles over to make sure that they can eat while they get accepted into the group. Um, and horses leaving the herd, I haven't really noticed it that much unless they're really attached to another horse in the herd and that horse is upset when they leave. It hasn't been as much of a problem because I always make sure my horses have friends. My <laughs> Ironically, you said friends and per Percival Mueller has come here and You're Milo's making Penny McPinnerson face at him. In the, the background okay, at he's, I honestly think he's trying to tip them over because he figures there's got to be some food no, I in there. He's also just that, that the, yeah they're to trying to usurp okay, his so attention the next one was what do I think um about? how do you feel about halter bred horses some are nice but i find that like it, it's the same with dogs a lot of the show industries for a specific breed take certain things to such an extreme that it's no longer good so that's my opinion um this question okay um so this is sort of to get i guess a, probably a ballpark on costs how much do the horses cost you in a year or a month? And can you be on a cheap budget while help having horses? I like that one. Maybe just get, why don't you give like a ballpark on how much the feed typically costs per month as a general, well, and then how you can be on a cheaper budget while having horses. Okay. Well, like it depends on how many horses you have, but you have to remember horses eat like 2% of their body weight in hay per day. So factor that cost in with hay costs in your area because hay is way more expensive here than it is in other areas of Canada. So our costs would be higher for hay than people who live like in the middle of BC. Oh my God. Okay, just let him climb up if he wants to. Here we go. All right. Let's so see what he's I up to. Look up the hay costs in your area and then depending on how much grain your horse needs too, some horses, oh my God, the <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Depending on how much grain the horse needs to, you'd factor that in. And then if you're boarding, you'd factor boarding costs in and so on and so forth. How about for the, um, can you be on a cheap budget while having horses? Why don't you talk about how you find frugal ways to still give the same kind of care that they need? Like maybe talk about like round bales and mm -hmm. things like that. Think ways in which so, you... I save money on hay by buying bigger bales. So I'll get the really big square bales that are like 1300 pounds. And they're cheaper for that amount of hay than it would be to buy per bale. Oh, Milo, you're so not nice. And then I also buy round bales, but you have to be careful with rounds because some of them are cow hay and they're really wet and your horse will call if they eat them. So you have to be careful about that. But I'm also getting my horses the botulism vaccine so that if they ever do have a wet part of hay, it's not going to be a factor. Excellent. Okay. Um, do you have any plans to breed for any more foals in the future? No, not anytime soon. So that doesn't mean you would never do it. It just means you yeah, don't have a plan. Have no plans yeah. to do it. Then he's, oh my goodness. Okay, can we just zoom in? Poglet, I'm yeah, going to have to move. Oh God, he's he's, he's rolling move. right where I am. And Percival Mueller. Milo's pissed. Look at Milo. <laughs> Milo, why? Oh, so annoyed. Oh, and Milo's still trying to climb up on the bin. This might not be a Q&A. This might be just, oh, and, <laughs> okay. This might just be a... God, Meet my horses 2.0, what my horses like oh to do. God. And Milo's not oh impressed. Now Milo's going to chase them away. Oh and God. here we go. Oh, please don't tell me. No way. Is he actually going to go and do that now oh too? Seriously? <laughs> okay. This is what your horse, this is your life with your horses. What is this? So he chases them away. I swear to God, if Banksy walks over here and rolls. I He's coming. <laughs> He's coming. That's so intentional by Milo. Uh, yes, I see. What? What is this? Are we turning into a circus horse? Can you not like attack my tripod, please? He's like wants to play with the tripod. No. So the question that we got interrupted. Oh my God, you guys, seriously. And Milo keeps trying to eat the tripod. Buddy, no, 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 no eating. Okay, you can stay with me if you're nice, okay? Oh, oh okay, goodness. okay. The question was how to teach yourself to wrap around the horse instead of gripping with the knees when riding. So you want to think of like your leg coming down from your hip and like being loose in your hips. So if you 
get softer in your hips and kind of make it so that your leg is draping rather than being tight and gripping with your knees on the saddle. It'll help your leg just flow all the way down. And if you ride in really short stirrups, lengthening your stirrups a couple holes and going more dressage style would be a good way to learn that. And it'll make it easier for you when you put them back up. So I would do that. And I would also think more of like weight in your heels and gripping with your calf, the side of your calf, not like the back of your calf with the duck foot. Jeez, Milo, he's eating the tripod. Okay, um, when do you know if you're ready for a horse? I would speak with your trainer and also your readiness for a horse would also depend on your budget because if you need something really really safe that you want to start showing like that year obviously you would need more of a budget than someone who is ready to like buy a green horse and train it. So it, I would factor that part in because if you're looking for something specific that's more expensive it might be better to wait until you can afford to do that because if you're planning on having the horse for a while, you have to make sure. Nice. Um, your favorite breed of horse other than thoroughbreds or warmbloods? And illusions are Lusitanos. Lovely. Um, who is your tallest horse? Who is your smallest horse? Shockingly, right now, Milo is the tallest at just under 16 two hands, and then Pogo, and then Percy, and then Banksy. But Banksy will be taller than Percy soon. Um, any advice on how to get your horse's hind end engaged? Dressage like From. That's, okay, good. I get my spot back. That, they're just silly. Okay. Um, hind end engaged. Dressage lessons. That would be the best way to do it because it really depends on what level you are in your riding and what level the horse your riding's at for like what type of exercises you'd be doing in dressage at any given point. And a trainer would better would be better at assessing that in person. Uh, would you ever do eventing with any of your horses? No. Okay. Um, how do you get your horse's tails to be long and grow since they're out in a the field? They have they eat biotin and then they also just have grain that promotes healthy coats, which I would assume would promote stronger hair and better growth. Obviously on top of the biotin actually being something that increases hair growth. So I would say that's the main thing because I don't brush their tails basically ever and I don't use tail bags and they just kind of do their own thing. Okay, so this is going to be like a racing, ra uh, two racing related questions, which fits because the person's um, name is Red Rum, which is really cool, actually. Oh my God, he's pulling off the bands. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, um, are you friends with any jockeys? I am friends with them on Facebook, as in we are acquaintances. None of like my friends that I would go out with and like do things with are jockeys. Okay, um, do you have any advice for someone who wants to become a jockey or a gallop rider like you do? Um, I would make sure you get on as many horses as you can, even if they're not race horses, just around the farm and get comfortable riding hot horses that might be silly and young horses and how to handle them without like getting mad at them or making it worse by level of anxiety and make sure you're comfortable with that because you want to be a pretty good hand when you're going to the track because if you can't control like excitable horses or if you're falling off it'll be harder to keep the job in the long run than it would be if you're more prepared going into it. Uh, how do you get into the horse world as an adult without being rich? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say your best bet, like if you've never ridden before and you need to learn, I would say try to start out with lessons even if you can only afford one a week or one every two weeks. And then in your time off between... We run. Okay. <laughs> so try to do lessons and then in your time off between lessons you can watch videos online and read more to learn more about horses and the theory of riding and then it'll be easier to apply that theory to your riding as you progress than it would be if you didn't know any of that. So that would be the best way to do it for cheaper, but it's not cheap. What are you planning to do with Banksy? Right now he's just chilling and growing and Eventually, I probably would like to do some in-hand classes with him. So that's really the only plans as of recent. Like, or that's really the only plans short term. In the long run, ultimately, it depends on how he progresses. And I don't like planning things way out in advance because as what happened with George, you never know what things are gonna change. So it's better to go with the flow while you know what's going on and plan short term than it is long term because things change. Um, favorite horse breed, favorite color? Um, 
thoroughbred and I like black horses the best. Can I answer the next question for you? Yeah. It's called how you how did you get into horses? Can I tell? Yeah. Okay. So you can just sit there and smile or roll your flipping eyes. It's weird if I'm just sitting here alone while you're talking. Here you go. Oh god, you can't sit on the edge of really young, like probably three or four, she started playing with my old briar horses that I had from when I was a kid. And she started asking by age four to ride horses. Um, and she kept asking so I started phoning around and most places weren't willing to take a kid that young for lessons and then we did find a trainer who was willing to give it a try and she started off with lessons where actually she would go to preschool in the morning and then we would drive to her lessons and she'd have her lesson and then she'd come home and have a honking big nap and so yeah so she started at age four and by age five was um, competing in walk trot ten and under. TV, you're back. Back. She's go? back because the horse, the ponies are gone. Yeah. Okay. How many horses have you owned? <laughs> Farley, Dallas. Wait, no. Farley, Maya, Dallas, um, Milo, Sydney, um, Rabbit, Phoebe, Archiboob, <laughs> Rabbit, Archie, um, Scarlet, technically, slash mm -hmm. donut. Chico. Mm -hmm. And then Pogo, Percy, and Babesy. There we go. Okay, Phoebe, just pick a spot, Sweet Cheeks. So how many is that? I don't know, lots. How many was that? Did you, you had your fingers yeah, out. Were you not counting? I think it was too many fingers. Okay, so too many. Stopped. Okay. Um, favorite and least favorite racehorse names, ones that you've known personally <laughs> or otherwise. So my favorite one that I've heard is Baby's Got Track and that's like at our local track and I just think it's clever and really funny. And then Phoebe, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then my least favorite one is probably Percy's Gabby's Bay Bay because I think it's really stupid. Um, Pogo and George both have both had good ones, and um, Pogo's is Ogopogo, and George's was Bionic. Uh, do you have any advice for a first-time thoroughbred trainer, or any training advice in general? Be patient. Take your time to develop the flat work foundation, because if you rush it, it'll take you way longer to fix what you broke in that process than it would just to put the foundation on. When do you think you will be riding Pogo? Um, well, with his knee, like he's sound on it, but the skin's healing so I don't really see the point in starting him in a work program for that reason so I want it to start shrinking up a little bit more and then we could consider starting him. What was Milo's story before you got him? Um, Milo was rescued by the SPCA as a two-year-old because his owners decided just horses don't need food so let's not feed them um, and then they got seized because they were really skinny and he was like basically unhandled, afraid of people. So when I eventually got him, like a few months after they rescued him and got him healthier, he was just halter broke. So from then to where he is now, we've kind of developed him and had him as part of the family. Um, how do you like to introduce yourself to new horses during the first meeting or initial training session? Oh, before, so before I even go to see a new horse, I would have already asked questions about their level of training and whatnot. And then I kind of assess them on the ground before I get on. If I see the owner tacking up and they're like flinching at the tack or something, I might not get on because I've had people tell me their horses are broke and then they just explode when I get on them and it's very dangerous. So you can never fully trust what the owners say. So I assess them on the ground. If they seem all right on the ground, then I'll get on them. But I'm careful like how I get on and I'm mindful of their attitude when I'm getting on. And then once I'm on, I kind of put them through their paces, see like what level they're at, like what they know. I'll try like leg yielding and see how they can bend, how their body feels. They just figure out what they know and sometimes they know less than what the owner thinks they do and sometimes they know more, so yeah. This is regarding the fact that you, you do emphasize that horses need turnout time as much as possible. Uh, since you work at the track, I was wondering how you feel about the turnout time for race horses. So for race horses, I respect how most thoroughbred breeders keep their babies more than like any other industry because there's more of an emphasis of throwing them out in herds for extended periods of time while they're growing up like if you just drive through Kentucky which is like the racing capital of the world you will see how huge their turnouts are and you'll see young thoroughbreds all out together at the actual racetracks 
there's no turnout and I would say that that's probably one of the more pressing issues in the racing industry that people should be pushing for because the horses should have paddocks at the track. In the off season, most of the trainers do turn their horses out. So like the problem is when they're training in town. Um, your opinion on toxic trainers not giving their part in a working student situation? I think like no matter how big of a name the person you're working for has, if they're not paying you in lessons, a fair, a fair compensation for if you were getting paid like even minimum wage, if you're putting more hours in than they're actually giving you in lessons, then there's no benefit to you in the long run because you're getting ripped off and they're overworking you and not offering enough payment. What Would you consider buying and training another pony? Yeah, eventually, but not anytime soon right now. Nice. Um, which of your horses has the best technical confirmation? Banksy and then Percy probably. And then, like, and then Pogo and then Milo. Uh, okay. What would you change about Milo's training if you knew as much as you know now? I would be more patient with things and do more of a foundation and take more lessons in dressage so that I knew how to produce him better on the flat earlier on. Um, and that would have helped in the long run. Uh, talk to us about your first horse. My first horse was an Arabian gelding that was six when we got him and he was quite green and pretty spooky and I was only like eight years old and he loved bolting on people so he one day jumped out of the arena which just had cement blocks around it not like the fence and then he like galloped around the property for like <laughs> several laps before I like turned him into a round pen and jumped off because I couldn't stop him so he taught me a lot of things um, like how not to shit myself when I'm riding a horse <laughs> probably also taught me how to be calm when terrible things yeah. happen because you were really little when that happened and all I could do was was Gosh. scream from from you lean back pull back and you were and it still wasn't working yeah. and there was nothing I could do um, okay how did you know um, the right time to get a full um, because this person has it as a long time goal of theirs so they were wondering how did you know it was the right time for you like for me, the opportunity arose just to have like a nice mare that I could breed and it was a time where I could manage it cost wise and where I have like enough young horses on the go that I can show and ride that having a young one to grow up for several, having a young one to grow up for several years isn't going to like inconvenience me or be a situation where I get bored that I can't do enough and start working with the horse too early. Okay. Um, do you night check your horses? Yes, I can see them from the window, so I literally check on them all the time through the window. As can well. can you be really honest about the way in which you check on them <laughs> through the window? I turn. Okay, I was meaning that before you do that, you'll hear some. I hear something out there. Something's wrong. Something's wrong, Mom. I think something's wrong out there, and then you check. <laughs> and usually nothing's wrong. Last question that I've got on the list here. Are you looking for another project horse like Archie anytime soon? No, it's a really bad time to buy horses right now with the pandemic and financially it doesn't make sense for me right now. Plus I don't really want to add anyone new after just losing a horse. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Shelby Dennis. It's been lovely talking to you today. Wow, you thanks. too, Feeberts. Yeah. Well, Phoebe didn't get asked any questions, so... Phoebe. Answer a question, my woman. In the comments, well, Phoebe, why are your claws so long? And it's no. because we're working on it. Positive reinforcement. So Patience. Goes, Thank you for watching my Q&A. I hope you learned something about me and my horses. And feel free to keep asking questions on my Instagram days that I do question. And following my channel so that you know things.